Thank you. Uh, so uh, I have one slide up there already. So this is a classical, this is the Apollonian packing. And uh, as people have talked about uh, in the previous talks, it comes from, it starts off with a configuration of four pairwise, I mean, pairwise tangent circles. And then you start inverting uh, You start inverting along those dual circles, which is orthogonal to, to three. And once you start com uh, inverting those in this configuration along these uh, dual circles, then you get pictures like this, okay? Um, so this picture has uh, all these numbers. Those are the curvature of the circle, okay? So outer circle has curvature six, but oriented outward. But all other circles, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. And then uh, th those numbers actually tell, tell us the curvature. All right, so let's just uh, quickly review the uh, Apollonian packings. Whoop, Apollonian. OK, so. The, the goal of the talk is to actually show you the generalization, uh, which also leads to integral packing like this. So I'm going to call this one classical Apollonian packing, because uh, this, this has long, long, long history. But um, the other ones I'm going to talk about is uh, indirect generalization. OK? So So uh, the configuration of four pairwise tangent circles is often called Descartes configurations. And then and then you invert <laughs> along the those dual circles and then fill in the uh, those interstices and then that's the Apollonian circle packings. All right, um, the, the reason why the configuration of four circles is called Descartes configuration is because the because of the Descartes theorem, okay, which says that if I take uh, uh, if I take the uh, Descartes configuration and write down the f uh, curvature vector for the four four tuple, right? There are four circles. So, for example, the one I started with was minus 6, 11, 14, and 15, right? Then uh, if I take the oops, if I take this form, uh, uh, it's going to be zero. Okay, so this form, which comes from matrix, uh, all right, uh, we call Descartes form. Okay. All right, so. Uh, with the Descartes form, uh, there are a few things. Uh, if you start with the integral com on the initial configuration, all the circles turns out to be integral. And another thing is that we can actually describe the how the bend vector gets transformed by inversion by 
uh, action of matrix group called a polonian group. Okay. So. Uh, maybe I should use gamma to be consistent with Alex's talk. Right, then uh, uh, those are generated by four matrix, which looks like uh, those. <coughs> And uh, if we invert along the fourth circle, for example, then B1, B2, B3, B4 get transformed by the new B4. So if I, if I invert along this one and the then this gets inverted into here, so this one has a band B prime, B4 prime. So this this matrix group captures the uh, the action of uh, what the those inversion does to the bands, okay, uh, the curvatures. All right, so. Uh, and then. Uh, as I showed in one picture, right? So, oh, sorry, I I, I messed it up. There, there's no two here. Two is I put two here. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. All right. So, okay. So. The, we get the integral packing uh, by the action of this group. You can see that the all the circles end up being uh, integers. Okay. So what I want to do is to uh, discuss the gen uh, generalization of uh, these types of packing. So, uh, but before I go into that, let me just mention a few things. So, so if P is packing and uh, this is a set of all curvatures of circles. Then uh, Alex talked about uh, very, you know, results on this uh, results on this uh, set of curvatures. That. Um, So the question was, what is this set of integers? And uh, the the theorem that uh, Borgen and Kontrovich proved was that this density goes to one. Uh, okay, I should really write down the cutoff, but um, let me just say. Ver Density, okay, so if you, it, density of the numbers that actually appear in the packing over the admissible ones, that goes to one. Oh, just one note. Oh, so the, the 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 way that the many of these uh, theorems work was to actually look at the circle stabilizer. Maybe that's what you. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
you actually uh, find those uh, by working on the circle stabilizer. So it's just, just one, I mean, you can actually pick a circle and then look at the other circles that's tangent to it. Density is zero for one. Okay. All right, so the, the, the main conjecture, uh, so I said just the various work, but Is that the uh, all but ec all ex all but finitely many uh, admissible numbers actually do appear? in the uh, as a curvature in the packing okay so um, so I'm going to uh, generalize the, uh, these kind of construction uh, using hyperbolic geometry and then uh, show that they you know uh, pretty much the story kind of carries through so um, let me just start with just a picture like this. So the, class, the Descartes configuration that we looked at in the classical Apollonian packing, you can think of it as the circles that arises by taking the intersection of the, uh, tetrahedron and the mid sphere which is tangent to the all the edges okay and that you can actually draw let's say here I only did it for uh, platonic uh, platonic polyhedron but uh, we can actually construct different uh, initial circle uh, initial cluster of circles uh, based on different combinatorics of polyhedron. Okay, so and then I'm, I, I write this for the dual polyhedron. Um, So uh, the kind of uh, kind of uh, initial circle patterns I consider uh, take, takes the uh, polyhedron P and then for each vertex. I take one circle and tangency graph is uh, isomorphic to one skeleton of P. So here, uh, this there is one circle for each vertex of tetrahedron. Now there's uh, here. This is actually octahedral pattern, and uh, I draw cube. <laughs> so uh, there's some uh, some reason to it. But um, oh, let me just bring a pen. So the planes that I okay. Instead of saying that I messed up the slide, which really was, but um, I'm going to do something. So. The, if I want to uh, look at the, if I do the reverse of the stereographic projection, the circles that should be 
here and here and so on okay so those are the ones that actually go through these points of tangency I this should touch but okay and uh, in order to do the uh, inversions like this uh, we need Uh, dual circles, okay, where we invert. So for each uh, face of the polyhedron, there exists a dual circle. Uh, okay, so this is act this is, is this is actually in the in my cluster, um, and then this is. Uh, the dual circle is not a part of the cluster, but um, if if I if I take a face of the polyhedron, and if I look at the circles for the face and circle for the vertex of this face, they should intersect orthogonally, okay? So in the case of a classical polonium packing, dual circles are the ones that looks like these, and they all intersect orthogonally like this. Yeah. <coughs> and the, the fact that it's orthogonal allows us to actually uh, invert while keeping the the vertex circle for that face, and then bring in the other circles into the interstice. Okay, so if we have a cluster uh, modeled on this is a, just an observation, but if I have a cluster modeled on a polyhedron P, we can invert along the dual circles to get uh, an infinite circle packing. And then we say that those are modeled on this polyhedron. Okay, so uh, one might ask, when do I actually have a starting the polyhedron? Uh, when do I have a, such a configuration? And uh, this actually, the answer is that there is always one, essentially unique. Uh, So this is a kebe andre thurston theorem, but uh, some people say that the, the some people refer to kebe andre thurston theorem as the ones that's only t are triangulated. So I should probably say general, and then probably mention uh, Schramm's paper because that's where you can find the proof. For any Convex polyhedron P, uh, they exist conformally unique uh, cluster modeled on P. Okay, so the corollary is that uh, for starting with any convex polyhedron, we can actually generate uh, a polonian, well, a polonian. In a conformal, yes. So up to Mobius, up to the action, up to Mobius transformation, right? The cluster, the the Decker, Decker configuration is unique, and therefore polonium packing is unique. And then the same thing actually happens with arbitrary uh, polyhedral cluster that you start with. Okay. Um,
Okay, so I, in this picture, right, uh, if you look at the tangency pattern, uh, you see that I drew the ones corresponding to the platonic. So the, the one on the left is tetrahedral. This is actually octahedral. This is actually cube, and then I cos and dodecahedral. If you look at the tangency pattern, right, uh, these are these are trivalent, so th those are the cube and dodecahedral pattern, and then uh, octahedral, icosahedral. Now, the, the it seem it looks like I, I my picture on the top row is not matching, but then uh, the the faces those are actually The, those are actually the, I drew the dual polyhedra so that the, uh, those are the planes where I'm inverting. Okay, so those, so those are the, so these circles are actually where I'm inverting the configuration. Okay, so the point is that the dual circles are, uh, give the uh, dual polyhedron, so those are the places where I'm inverting. Okay. Now, uh, in order to do, in order to study these, uh, okay, let me just, uh, in order to study these uh, other uh, Apollonian packings based on different polyhedra, um, we need things like, uh, you know, analog of Descartes form and analog of Apollonian group and so on. So, uh, let me just uh, say how those things arise and uh, using a little bit more of a geometry than some of the other talks on Apollonian packings. Okay, so, so this is a, I could call inversive geometry. So for each circle, let's say, well, given a circle, say center xy, radius r, and then the curvature b equal 1 over r, we, we can associate a four dimensional vector. A, B, X, X hat, Y hat, where this is uh, B times X, this is B times Y, and the second component B is really the curvature, and then this A is the curvature of circle obtained by inverting this circle, this circle C along the unit circle at origin, a unit, a unit circle about, about the origin. So this uniquely captures the, what the, uh, this gives the coordinate for the, uh, th that expresses each circle. And then we define the bilinear product uh, so this is uh, due to I th the first place where th this product is expressed as bilinear product was in Wilker's uh, paper so We just call it uh, W of C. And uh, it's written as 
W of C1 times the uh, matrix times the W of C2 transpose, where Q, this Q is minus 1 half, minus 1 half, 1, 1. Okay. So this is the uh, so this is the definition of this inversive product. Now, what does this tell us? Algebraically, this quadratic form is uh, sort of like a gives you Hermitian the discriminant of Hermitian form uh, with a parameter uh, given by those uh, the, the vector. But um, geometrically. Uh, this inversive product actually measures something about uh, hyperbolic geometry. Okay, so it tells me the plus minus of cosine of the angle if uh, circles intersect uh, plus minus one if tangent. and plus minus cosh of the hyperbolic distance of the two planes defined by the circle. So this d delta is the distance between hyperbolic planes defined by the circles. Okay, and then the sine plus minus comes from the choice of orientation of the circle. So, let me just quickly, uh, the, the reason why I had to write all this down is uh, to give a explanation of what the Descartes, where the Descartes form comes from and how it would generalize. So, If I have a if I have a four circles in Decker configuration, we can actually write down these four vectors. Uh, for inversive coordinate vector for the circles. And then we can take the Gramian of these, for, uh, these circle vectors, right? Then uh, right, then they, what we find is that the, let's call this W, then W and uh, take that Q, Q, and then W transpose gives me uh, the. I'm sorry, the Gramian is the matrix with those coefficients there? Uh, so, Gramian meaning that uh, entries WI and then that Q and then WJ. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, with respect to this bilinear product, I'm taking the Gramian. Okay? And then if you take the, in the case of Decker configuration, if I take the uh, Gramian, I get this matrix, which actually happens to be the same as that matrix I wrote down there. But that's not actually where it really came from. I mean, that, that's not, this is not really, this shouldn't be thought of as that matrix, although they're equal. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the matrix Descartes theorem is following, so it, maybe I can write it this way. So the if I write the 
if I invert this equation, okay, if I invert this equation and rearrange, I end up with uh, this equation, and this is this should be thought of as a generalization of Descartes theorem, because if I uh, if I look at the second column here, that would be the bend vector, right? Because B is the second component. And then, so if I take the 2, 2 entry, gives me the Descartes theorem uh, in this equation. Now, it, it's, it's actually a coincidence that the, this Gramian matrix happened to have inverse, which is just the scalar multiple of itself. So that's why we end up with this matrix here in this form. But it should the, this matrix w that's responsible for Descartes form should be really thought of as the inverse of inversive Gramian. Uh, if it, yeah, the, the, the determinant is not one, so it would be it would be scale multiple, but. Then W is the matrix, the big So the, the Apollonian group fixes the the uh, this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So the one would want to sort of like uh, generalize this and uh, start with the other polyhedral configuration and uh, do something like this. But if you do the uh, other configurations, then you have a more than four circles. So the, the W matrix is not going to be square. Okay, so right. So instead of uh, just the Instead of uh, putting this big matrix where you have a one row vector for each circle, right? I actually have to com somehow come up with a four by four matrix so that I can do this uh, inverse. Uh, I can do the inverse, uh, take inverse. Okay, so now the one thing is that this has rank four. Okay. So we can actually take four vectors or some, some linear combination of those vectors and then uh, come up with a four by four representation. And uh, then we can actually come up with a, uh, this, equa this equation with the Gramian, and then taking the inverse and rearranging, uh, we get the general version of the, uh, the matrix Descartes theorem. But I forgot to mention Lagarius. Uh, okay. So then we we have this uh, equation like this because we can invert, and then this is going to be this is considered to be the generalization of the matrix Descartes theorem. And again, if you take the two two entry.
gives me the analog of of Descartes theorem. Okay. All right. So th that's the sort of the outline of uh, how the Descartes form can uh, the analog of Descartes form comes out. And then once we have this, okay, then we can also have we can also define analog of a polonian group and then once we have a polonian group generating the set of the bends appearing in the curvature i mean appearing as a curvature in a packing Uh, with the initial bend vector, well, okay, so th it's not going to be exactly the union of this. You have to actually, ex you know, un unpack and un unzip or uncompress the four by four to get the uh, all the bends. But we can actually generate the the integers set of integers that appear in the given packing. Okay? So with this you can start asking the questions, well uh, do we actually find integral packing and if we find integral packing can we ask the same type of question like local global conjecture? Okay? So let me just uh Okay, so I haven't said that, and uh, so that's the theorem I'm just going to state right now. So, once we, ha once we know that the curvature R in Z, then we can ask similar type of questions. So, is that okay so first thing we did is that we looked at the uh, all the uniform polyhedra so Okay, so what are the ones? Uh, some. Hmm? Okay, some. <coughs> right, if you deform, you, okay, you, you, you go off the integers, but you can actually realize it by some opponent, I mean, some integral ones. So, okay. the, the classical, the original Apollonian packing corresponds to taking tetrahedron, uh, then you can take octahedron. This was already studied by Gettler and Malos, and studied by the curvature studied by Jang. Cube, this appeared in uh, Kate Stan's work. And then there are three more. So let me just show you what the uniform polyhedra generally looks like. All right, I didn't have time to really <coughs> do them separately, but there are some redundancy in this picture, but I'm, I organize them to actually have a sort of like a nicely organized list. Okay, so he, this is a list, uh, this, is, this shows the, all the Archimedean polyhedra, which is the uniform polyhedra that's not prism or anti-prism. So the five columns on the left tells me if you start with triangulated platonic solid, if I start with the triangulated platonic solid and then start truncating, then you get these uh, different polyhedra and then ends up in a dual here. Yeah. So this is a truncated tetrahedron 
tetrahedron is self-dual, so it appears again here. Here, they start with octahedron, truncated octahedron, cube octahedron, and then truncated cube and cube, and so on. Now, the three columns on the right shows a few other uh, uniform uh, Archimedean polyhedra. So here, if you take the cube octahedron and truncate, uh, you get this. Uh, this one, if you take the, this, let's say you take the one of the truncated one and then sort of uh, slice off the edge, then you get these, these ones. And then these are, the, the one here are called snub. This is called snub cube. This is called snub dodecahedra, which comes up by take, putting a diag diagonal on the, on the last, col last column and then make it uh, uniform and then you get these. So those are the, I'm not gonna say the names, but um, those are the, the uh, all the Archimedean polyhedra. And the, for the Archimedean polyhedra, there are three more that gives rise to integral packing, okay? Um, let me, so what, what are those gonna look like? So I'm gonna put, all right, where is it? I'm going to show you, this is the cube octahedral pattern, okay? And then there are actually four, uh, 14 of them. Wait, no, no, how many? I have a, yeah, uh, 12 of them, sorry, one for each edge of the cube. So there are 12 circles. And then if you take the, if you take the inversion and then get the polonium packing, this is the sort of picture you get. And then it is integral, okay? Now the fact that they, they, those, the integrality comes about, I mean, you can actually compute this uh, Descartes form and then compute the Apollonian group, and then take a nice initial, con in initial configuration, like the one I just showed you, and then generate them, and then you see that they, you will end up with the integral packing. Do you, do you have like in, uh, Uh, oh, wait, have a, a reduction theory. Yes. All right, so, so the, the reduction theory works for all. Firstly, the parameterization is also integer solutions to some quadratic matrix equation. Mm -hmm. All right, so there are, okay, let me just pick, show one picture. So if you want to reduce it to, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're saying, but um, the, Uh-huh. Oh, so, okay. Right, so, it, right, so. And then you look at the Apollonian group, the orbits of the Apollonian, different orbits of the Apollonian group correspond to different integrals. All right, so that's sort of the Graham, Lagarius, Malas, Wilkes, Yang's reduction theory, right? Or the, 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 yeah. Okay, so, okay, so there, th all right, so there is a thing about the Archimedean polyhedra that's different from platonic ones, which is that the, uh, it's not, which is that it's not edge transitive. So depending on uh, which edge you take it to the infinity, your strip packing looks different. So here's the, that's, this is not it. <laughs> here's one, here's the, uh, one corresponding to, what does it correspond to? This is the one corresponding to uh, truncated octahedron, I believe. And then depending on which edge you take, uh, you might end up with this strip packing or this strip packing. So there are two classes here. Right, so Archimedean case, you're not gonna end up with a unique uh, general pattern. And even worse, Okay, so I only said Archimedean so far, but uh, there is a six prism 
that you can get. Uh, the, there are prisms and anti-prisms that, that are uniform. Six prism, and uh, it gives another uh, integral packing. And uh, so let me just say one thing I forgot to say. So the, the, you, so duals of these unif uniform polyhedron also gives integral packing. Those are not uniform, but duals also give integral packing. And uh, one thing that's interesting about the six prism and its dual is that if you take the uh, dual of six prism, you get hexagonal bipyramid, which corresponds to this configuration. And then you can make it integral by, say, putting minus one and three, 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 three. And then if you invert this along the outermost circle, you get uh, you get one, like you get the one in the middle, so they're all ones here. And then minus one third outside. But this is up to scaling. It's actually the same. So it turns out that in the, if you take the six by pyramid, you don't, you know, sometimes there, there are solutions which cannot be reduced to strip packing. So there would be like, a, you know, other cases you have to worry about. But, but you know, to compare, you know, different initial parameters, I mean, you can actually do the reduce it by a Polonian group and compare. Repeat your question. Did you put up the other picture? Uh huh. Of this, the full packing. I think Peter's question is you give me one cluster in that picture, but don't show me the rest of the picture. You give me another one. Uh huh. And we determine that they actually live in the same. Oh, so the yes, answer is yes. Uh, you can take the sum of the bends as a sort of like a size in norm or size of the cluster and then reduce that norm as much as you can to get the yeah okay um let me just uh finish it off with one more theorem so so far i just talked about the the especially nice polyhedra with very nice symmetry, etc. So, uh, in infinitely many. Uh, Polyhedra giving uh, giving rise to some uh, some integral Apollonian circle packing, and then and then I, okay, the, the infinite could. Okay, so I, I just did infinitely many polyhedra, but the there are actually infinitely many types of uh, conformal types of uh, apollonium integral apollonium packings. Okay, and uh, the the reason why something like this is true has to do with uh, going from com if you look at it has to do with a certain operation you can do with polyhedra that actually allows you to create another integral packing. So you can actually get infinitely many distinct polyhedra with distinct Apollonian packings that can be uh, made integral. Okay, sorry, I went over time a little bit. I stop here.